So get tested and then um, have you, is there other steps where you just find a clinic and you start freezing eggs? I know you're into that preconception. You mentioned you're going to do another one. Now I get it because at the Integrated Fertility Symposium, I, every day I would see you under that laser, right? The little <laughs> laser. I, was, I was like, I thought she's done. Now I get it. You were getting a little uh, too right. for your own. Huh? works. I mean, listen, I, I do think that there's a whole body component here that it's not just, you know, uh, DNA. DNA has a huge factor in a lot of um, how your outcomes are, but your lifestyle factors can impact things as well. So smoking, for example, is the number one killer of eggs. And if you can just simply stop that, you're doing yourself a huge favor. Um, and then lifestyle factors, eating well, uh, balancing everything in moderation. I like to say like, you don't, you don't have to give up alcohol, right? But it does help if you, I mean, anything with common sense, if it doesn't make sense, then you probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> Any other um, suggestions? Again, you've been through this. And so I'm just curious, like, you know, if somebody comes to you and, and they're going to your websites um, and please shout out some of the websites where they can, they can learn more about this. But if somebody was a girlfriend's coming to you or just uh, somebody that's arm's length and they're like, you know, where do I start? What do I do? I'm, I'm 30 years old. I got this great career. I haven't found anybody I'm interested in. I don't want to marry for the sake of having babies. I want to meet somebody that's, that's a great fit. I'm thinking about egg freezing. Can you give me yeah. some suggestions, please? Sure. So, I mean, first off, it's arm yourself with knowledge and then get tested. So that's step number one. So um, understanding your body and how it works, understanding the, the, the cliffs and the cutoffs. And, you know, it, it's a little hard, I think, because we're wrestling with, and I, I felt like this as well, um, that if I wouldn't have had the career path and the trajectory that I did, I don't know that I would have accessed egg freezing in 2015 at 33 years old. Like it probably just wouldn't have been on my to-do list of things to check off. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm the perfect demographic because I see and feel exactly what everyone's dealing with is that, you know, I had this very aggressive career path. I was traveling and working, you know, multiple states in the U.S. and traveling overseas. I was running clinical trials in Europe. You know, I didn't have time to date. And even the people that I did date, you know, maybe they weren't going to turn out to my parenting partner. I mean, I had um, a couple of relationships that were four years long each and you thought, oh, for sure, this was just going to happen. You never expected it not to happen. So when that realization came that um, I couldn't rectify my family future the same time I was hoping that my career and everything else would come into balance, egg freezing became that perfect uh, relief for me to buy me some time. And really it gave me about between five and six additional years, which may be enough for what I need, um, unless I decide to be a parent on my own. But the real goal in my, in my personal situation is to parent with a parenting partner or become a, a mother with a parenting partner. So, um, so you know, you have to put work and, and diligent effort into that. But so getting your baseline AMH level, tested, getting an antra follicle count, having that tested every single year, then you can watch that progression. So if you start with that younger, I think is, is definitely helpful. So I think, you know, the millennials have such an advantage because the technology of vitrification and how egg freezing works um, is now coming up to a period of time where our technology has met our social demands, you know, like where, where we are as, as um, in the society of how we are few family and parenthood, but it touches the deep core of like who we are as humans, like where, what our value system is. So I think, you know, wrestling with that first too, and kind of understanding that you shouldn't feel guilty for having these feelings. Um, because I think, you know, it's, it's easier for men to put that off and to not, talk about how maybe they want a family until later. It's just more, uh, they're geared that way. Um, it's okay to have these feelings, I think, is the, like understanding that. So there's a lot of things you can't control. And so, right. you know, the world is somewhat toxic. So you're not going to be able to live in a bubble. Most people won't. However, you can choose certain things that you're putting into your body and what you're putting around yourself. You can, yeah. you can work on stress reduction. Um, right. We're obviously, because of our practice, we're advocates of acupuncture for the blood flow to the ovaries. Right. 
Okay. We use that. We're pioneering low-level laser therapy. So we do the yes. laser to improve mitochondrial function and blood flow and reduce that oxidative stress. Um, so you like the diet, the lifestyle, the exercise. And then basically it's finding a clinic that's lo hopefully locally that fits, fits with you. And then yeah. being prepared to do a few um, cycles to get enough eggs that can reach your goals of, of how many kids you want based on the current stats of 2 to 12% of these eggs can turn into a baby. Right, right. And I think, um, you know, that is a key point too. finding the physician in the doctor's office that you feel comfortable with having those pre discussions up front. What are the costs? Uh, maybe uh, negotiating a three pound, a three cycle, you know, situation where you can, um, you know, do that up front before you jump in, because once you jump in, like it's really hard to leave a practice. It's really hard to switch doctors. Uh, all your medical records, getting them to one location was hard enough, right? So, and your STI uh, clearances and your regular PAPs and all those, all those detailed medical records, um, you probably just don't want them floating around to multiple clinics. So interview, take some time and, and, and honor those decisions and, and go with your gut. Um, I always say that, you know, there's just like there's a lid for every pot, there's a doctor for every patient. And um, don't feel bad if you don't click with a certain doctor, but also do your research on the lab and the team as a whole. What, um, what can people find on some of your websites? And, and please, now is a great time to kind of share the, the websites that you offer, and then sure. just so what they're going to find on each website to help them on this journey, please. Yeah, so I've been building content around this subject matter for quite some time, um, and basically building everything I wish I would have had before I got started, even knowing all the details that I knew and working in medical health um, within women's health for the last decade or so. But um, experience.com will give you stories and different um, examples and, and um, resources that you can use. So like other websites, other podcasts, it's basically a curation of all of everything egg freezing. It's everything egg freezing and back. Um, you can, you can find in one central location. Um, then the podcast eggology club is, you know, for the individuals that want to tune into something audio, you can listen to all of the different paths to parenthood and different stories and outcomes. So you can kind of see like, oh, this, um, this, this happened to this person and be aware of all the potential factors of what happens when you go through IVF and fertility and egg freezing. And then um, right now I'm making a video doc series called This is Egg Freezing, highlighting my past experience just freezing myself and what it looks like. So what egg freezing looks like from start to finish, um, the ups, the downs, the emotional, the shots, the trigger, the under the anesthesia, behind in the lab. Like these are all things that you may not realize what you're getting yourself into. And I just want to bring transparency across the board for everyone to um, see what egg freezing or the early stage of IVF can look like. Excellent. So thank you so much for putting together those resources. That's, that's great help. Again, I've always found, I always, when you, so it's always nice when you know somebody's gone through this before yeah. And rather than you have to go through that whole experience yourself and collect this information, it's nice for people who are starting to build on your experience, right? So they right. can stand on your shoulders with gratitude for doing this.